Alright, welcome. Now for something different. So it's not really an intention technique. No idea how I ended up in that session. So, self motion illusions in virtual reality. Uh, are they good for anything? Um, before maybe I should explain what kind of self motion illusions I mean here. It might be actually one of the earliest illusions people ever observed just, uh, just by staring at, uh, for example, a waterfall. After a while, you don't feel like things going down, but you're like, oops, I'm drifting upwards. And this is so compelling that people actually like to use these in theme parks more than 100 years ago. Here's the haunted swing where the actual room could rotate. Even though people were just swinging, they actually got the impression that they were going all the way around. Um, even researchers like to do this. Here's a tumbling room. The most prominent approach to study this, however, was the optokinetic drum, where you have a cylinder with striped patterns and that rotates. And when the stationary <coughs> observer sees this, initially, if you plot the vector intensity or self motion illusion intensity over time, they perceive, well, just the drum is rotating, but then at some point they start to perceive self motion until it's fully saturated, as long as the uh, thing moves. So there's a progression from object motion to self motion. And you can, probably less, uh, less well known, you can achieve a similar illusion by stepping along blindfolded <coughs> on a rotating circular treadmill. It doesn't work on the gym on your linear treadmill. They typically don't get the impression that you're running through the wall, but on a circular treadmill you would get the illusion. So here's an example. So here's Daniel. He's continuously pointing to where he perceives the camera to be. And as you see, after a few seconds he starts to feel like he's drifting. And that's really a powerful embodied illusion. So people are always kind of surprised when they open up, uh, take off the blindfold. And this one of these strong embodied illusion that we're interested in because that's often what's lacking in virtual reality. So, why do we want to care? Or why do I care about self-motion illusions? Well, first of all, I think they're pretty cool. I mean, everybody likes these visual illusions where one uh, bar is higher than the others, but that's basically just happening in the visual system in your brain. This is a full body illusion. Um, it's also really interesting from a basic research standpoint because it tells you the cue integration between one modality or cue, set of cues telling you that you're moving and the other one telling you you're not. And then there's even a time progression through that. In our context here, but as we have virtual reality researchers, I think they might actually be useful for making the virtual feel more real. So what I, uh, do I mean by that? When you normally move through space, well, we feel like we're moving through space, but in virtual reality, often enough, you're not, unless you're physically moving. So they might help to improve the convincingness and naturalism of the simulation. Also, research has shown that they, these illusions correlate with the presence and immersion of the simulation. The specific focus of our study here is on spatial orientation and how the self-motion illusion might contribute to that. Um, so here's a demo. So it's, it's not a video I'm doing, the, the demo here. So even with eyes closed, you have a bit of a high cognitive load. Your brain automatically updates where things are in the surrounding. So uh, if it, this works, I should still know that you're over here. My computer's here and here are the two screens. If it doesn't work, well, I need to change my career. <laughs> so this automatic spatial updating, it seems to uh, happen whenever we physically move. What that means is, is if you're asked to do a perspective change, it's a lot easier when you're allowed to physically move to that orientation. <coughs> nice. Now, if you're just asked to imagine a new orientation, that's a lot harder. So what do we do in virtual reality? Well, whenever we can afford to, we like using these wonderful motion simulators, omnidirectional treadmills, free space walking areas, redirected walking, <coughs> wonderful. But it's not, just not for everybody's budget. So is there a way we could use all our knowledge about human multimodal perception and cognition to come up with a more lean and elegant approach to self-motor simulation? So it will feel right, people perceive it right, even though it's not, and we're just playing a trick on you, just like an elegant magician's trick. So could we make the virtual more real through embodied self-motor illusions? Now if you phrase that as a research question, a testable one, could the illusion of self-motion provide a similar benefit as actual self-motion in the sense that it could facilitate perspective switches? Maybe through some kind of automatic spatial updating that helps you to remain oriented despite perspective changes and thus provide an embodied, natural and effective way to move through the environment and this might be more affordable because we might reduce the need for these huge motion simulators. Nothing against them, they're just pricey. So, this is our setup. It's kind of unconventional. It's a non-visual virtual reality setup here. 
I'll tell you why. So people are suspended in a hammock chair above a circular treadmill. And we combined biomechanical with auditory induction. We couldn't use visually induced induction because the visual cues would have interfered with the perspective switch. So, So we induce biomechanical action by rotating the floor and people just stepping along with that and combine this with auditory action because then the illusion is stronger. And this was done by recording what it sounds like to physically rotate in the environment. And when you later display that via headphones, well, it just sounds like you're rotating in the environment. So in the experiment, we combined the two things, so people were had headphones, noise cancelling headphones, uh, blindfold, and we rotated the sound and the floor at the same time. So what people perceived is initially just that, the floor and the sound is rotating, but after a certain action on that time, they start to perceive like they are moving, until eventually they might perceive that the floor and the sound is stationary and they themselves are moving. So, our goal was to measure whether such an illusion can facilitate perspective switches. And the most intuitive and natural way to measure perspective switches is by asking people to point to previously learned objects from imagined perspectives. So, we asked people from a given orientation, always let's call it zero degrees, to learn several objects randomly scattered in the environment until they were good enough at that. And then, during the actual experiment, we asked them to point from an imagined orientation 120 degree of the physical orientation, and that was the imagined condition. They should simply ask to imagine a perspective switch. And then we compared this to a vection condition where we tried our best to give them the illusion of rotating to the 120 degree orientation. Now, this is a bit tricky and took us actually years to figure it out uh, because everybody has different vection onset time, vection strength, and so on. So, we wanted to make sure that people have saturated vection. So, what we ended up doing was providing them with one full 360 degree rotation and then an additional 120 degree. That is a really hard test because it's a lot harder to do this than just 120 degrees. But we thought, okay, now if infection still shows a benefit, then that's an even stronger argument. So, what we defined, in response time, there was virtually no difference. However, if you look at the accuracy or absolute pointing error, there's a huge benefit uh, when people perceive that they're rotating to the, to the imagined orientation. And the added, little eta square here means that 47% of the variability in the data could be explained by people having or not having the illusion of rotating to the new orientation. And we found similar results for the configuration error that tells us about the relative accuracy of pointing to all the different targets. So, I believe that this is actually the first study ever to show that self-motion illusions are not only cool, and interesting, but they can actually affect our behavior in that they can facilitate perspective switches. Now you might wonder how. And there's basically two mechanisms that likely contribute. One is that the illusion might reduce the transformation cost of transforming the mental representation of the original room to the to be imagined orientation. And the second one that likely contributed is that the illusion might have reduced the interference cost between your physical orientation and the to be imagined orientation. And th this experiment wasn't designed to disintegrate between the two, so they likely both contributed. So, in conclusion, it's just a short talk. I hope to have convinced you that the self motion illusion is not only cool, it's not only great for basic research, but it actually can affect our behavior in that it can facilitate perspective switches. And what we are currently looking at, whether we could actually use this to help people remain oriented during virtual travel without having to physically move, thus preventing disorientation. And eventually come up with a more <coughs> embodied, natural, and effective, but yet affordable self-motion simulation paradigm so that you might eventually be able to reduce the need for these wonderful huge motion simulators and thus make the virtual feel more real in a sense that people sense, perceive, and feel more similar to, to real world navigation in that they perceive self motion and thus are enabled to behave more naturally, for example, being based on automatic spatial updating. And yeah, thanks. That's the story, all the details in the paper, and I'd like to thank you and all the co authors and various funding agencies.